we're going to create some jewelry from an AI image and we're going to use a couple of newish tools that are on the market. The first thing we're going to use is Vista Sculpt. So Vista Sculpt allows you to create a bas relief image from uh, an image file if you already happen to have something like that or in fact you can just generate an image. So I can click on generate image here and then in here I can uh, put in a, a description. So I, I've done this before but I search for a sunflower uh, with no background and I asked it to generate that and it generated this here for me. So that was the, the uh, image that it found and we'll use that again to show what the process is. So I've now got that in there but I need to edit my image. So I don't really want this big border around it. So I can go into the Vista Sculpt Edit Image Options and go to the Crop Tool. So we're just going to crop the top, bottoms and side off. So there goes the top, there goes the bottom. We're going to get rid of that side and we're going to get rid of the right hand side. And I'll just apply that now. So we've got a nice clean image from which Vista Skull can then turn this into a, an STL a 3D file for us. Now there are a bunch of settings down the side. Uh, but we're going to leave them all as it currently is and just click Generate 3D Model. And this will take, I don't know, some time to do. There we go. That's now fairly quick. It's jumped ahead and it's finished. So I can now close that. So that's the 3D file that it generated. But I need to see if the dimensions are right for what it is that we're going to do. So here we can look at the different scale. And I know in this case that we actually want to, um, I want to make sure the lock aspect ratio is there. I know we're making something that's going to be about 25 million size. And that'll let me see not only the image, but it also lets me see how thick of a, of a engravable 3D object this is going to be. In fact, that works really well for our use. So I'm happy with how it looks. I don't think we need to make any changes with this, but we could certainly use all of the tools in here. And there's plenty of powerful tools. But for now, all we're going to do is export the 3D model and then make our um, mold that we're going to metal cast that image in. We're now going to do some very simple manipulation in 3D Builder. It's a free bit of software on every Windows computer. If it's not already installed, you can get it from the Microsoft Store. What I've got, and I'll post these models online, but this is a blank cast die. So what we need to do is etch out of the, this top surface that model that we just created. So I'm just going to import drag in the Sunflower STL that we made, import that in, and we're going to give it a little bit of manipulation uh, to get the image that we actually want. So if I have a look at this, the first thing we want to do is we want to cut this bottom square off. So we've just got this top bit. That's fairly simple. Let's just edit, split, and then we can adjust the height up and down to just get the piece that we want. Now I notice here that it's not quite level. So I'm just going to change that pitch slightly. It's probably only a degree or something like that. Yeah. So something like negative one will probably work. That looks a bit better. Adjust the height slightly. There we go. That looks pretty clean and circular. It's got all the detail that we want. I'll just split that out and keep the top. Okay, it's at a bit of an angle, so object settle. That will put it nice and smooth and flat. 
I'm going to want a bit of a rim on it as well. So I'm actually going to raise it up slightly. So we'll just move this up a little bit off the base. And then to make sure it uh, fills this bottom gap in, we're going to just extrude down. And that'll make it all nice and solid and make sure there's no undercuts or anything like that. So I can go edit, extrude, extrude down, let top, press that, and it'll do its thing. It'll take a little while, there's a bit of detail in this model. Okay, that's done. All I need to do now is subtract that out of that face. So we'll flip it over. Put it in the center. Probably helps if I have my mold in the center as well. Raise it up. Bring it down a bit. Bring it down a little more. Or oh, maybe even a frag more. I just want this top face proud of the surface, which it is, as you can see there. And now all I do is click Subtract. There we go. We have our die prepared to cast metal into as part of the die casting system. All that's left to do is to print it out and warm up some metal. Here's the jewellery casting system that's done in a thermocast. This is a reusable pouring basin that also clamps onto the actual mould. This is the mould that we created earlier. It's of the sunflower. And all that happens now is we place it in the mould like this, the pouring basin and the mould together, clamp it together, and we have a piece where we can pour, pull it apart, remove the item, close it back up, and repeat over and over as many times as we need. One other item I've got just out of shot normally is I've got a, a muscle vibrator, apparently from uh, Amazon, that's just going to give me a vibration table to help settle the metal into the fine details. Okay, first cast of the day. We're up in the 270s. I'll turn on some vibration. We'll just let that freeze and we'll see what we've got. No sand, no petrobond, no mucking around with uh, sand moulds and everything that entails. This is a fixed permanent mould that we can just reuse over and over. There we go. As we can see, the pewter's gone hard now. You get that sort of glossy surface to it. Open up the clamps. Pull apart the mould. A bit of flashing. Pop it out. And there we go. A little sunflower. We can then just cut the back off, remove the flashing. That goes back in the pot. And we just keep going. This one's done. Lovely. Looks really good. Alright, so that's the idea. You can just keep cast, remove, cast, remove over and over um, until you've got the number that you need and go from there. Alright, let's 
clean these up and see what we've got. Well, we'll clean this one up. There's a bit of flashing on it. We can just use side cutters to just knock those off. Oh, that should go back into the pot. And then I'm just going to run a sand around the edge to just clean it up. But as you can see, it's really thin if there is any flashing at all. And using the same side cutters then, I'm just going to cut the sprue off and drop it back into the pot. So, decent pair of side cutters. There we go. The sprue's off. Back into the milk pot for the next one. But that's looking pretty good. All you'd need to do is, you know, um, add some patina to it. So we might add uh, some pewter black to it. Give it a bit of then a, a highlights polish. Could add a finding. You could have that as a necklace or pendant or pin or brooch or whatever as part of uh, the, the jewellery work that you like to do. But if you can see the detail, it looks really really clean it's quick easy and as you can see you can churn out a whole heap in no time at all right got all the bits we need got a little bit of pewter black here uh, we've got it across the entire surface both high and low points a light brush until we get the color that we want or the patina that we want on it there we go very little machinery Turned an AI image into a pendant or a brooch. Looks good. To be able to 3D print these moulds, you can't use any normal resin. You actually have to use a specially designed resin for metal casting. And it's an Australian company that's actually produced this uh, product. So it's called Thermacast from Monocure 3D. It should be readily available all around the world. Uh, shortly it's in the testing phase at the moment and we're just seeing what it can do but as you can see it reliably lets you cast over and over metal objects